once again and welcome to another English language lesson. Let's begin with grammar. Let's talk about adverbs. An adverb is a word that modifies the verb in a sentence. When you modify a verb, you add extra information to it to change its meaning in a small way. So, an adverb will modify the verb to tell us how, where, when, or to what extent an action is done. Adverbs can also modify adjectives and other adverbs too. For our lesson today, we'll take a closer look at the adverb of manner. It is one of the many types of adverbs that can modify a verb and contribute meaning to the sentence. Adverbs of manner tell us how or in what way something is done. Adverbs of manner are flexible and can be put in mid or final position in a sentence. But it must always come after the verb, like this. My brother and his friends played happily in the garden. My brother and his friends played in the garden happily. Here's another point that you should remember. Most manner adverbs end in L-Y. Listen to how Jimmy and his friend use adverbs of manner in this video. Try and spot them, okay? Oh no, we're gonna be late. Don't worry, we'll get there easily. But how? The concert starts in two hours' time. I'll go home and ask my uncle pol very politely if he can take us there in his van. What if he says no? Don't worry, he, he won't. Isn't he the one who drives dangerously? No, 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 no. That's my cousin. Okay, you better go home quickly and call me as soon as you have any news. Okay, you do. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. Jimmy and Baljit used manner adverbs while they were talking. Those are the words that had the L-Y ending. Did you spot them? Well, here they are. Don't worry, we'll get that easily. Jimmy used the adverb easily to state the manner in which they would get to their destination. He was sure that they wouldn't have any difficulty getting there. I'll go home and ask my uncle very politely if he can take us there in his van. Jimmy used the adverb of manner, politely, to tell Baljit how he was going to speak to his uncle. He would not be rude, but very, very polite. Isn't he the one who drives dangerously? Baljit was concerned for their safety and wanted to confirm whether or not Jimmy's uncle drove dangerously. He wanted to know how the van was driven. Okay, you better go home quickly and call me as soon as you have any news. Baljit used the manner adverb quickly. That was how he wanted Jimmy to make his way home, not in a slow manner. There are many, many, many more adverbs of manner out there. Do some homework and find out what they are, okay? Let's learn about prefixes and how they can be used to form negative adjectives. To refresh your memory, let me tell you that a prefix is a set of letters we place at the beginning of a word to change its meaning. The first word on our list today is the adjective happy. Now to change happy to a negative, I am going to add the prefix un to it. There you are. Happy now becomes a negative adjective called unhappy. Friendly is a positive word. To turn it into its negative form, I will do as I did to happy above. 
I will put the prefix an at the beginning. Uh oh, it's not friendly anymore. It's now so negative, so unfriendly. Here are a few more examples for you. Watch carefully. Like, dislike, honest, dishonest, possible, impossible, polite, impolite. Today, we continue looking into David A. Hill's How I Met Myself. It is the story of a man and his bizarre meeting with his doppelganger, his double from the wall beyond the grave. It is said that seeing a doppelganger is a bad omen. Folklore has it that if you see your own ghostly alter ego, it is a sign of impending death. This curious tale revolves around an Englishman named John Taylor. He is a computer programmer who works for a multinational company in Bachi Ucha. He lives with his wife Andrea and his daughter Katty in an apartment in Holland Ucha. Both these places are in the 13th district of Budapest in Hungary. Okay, let's look at the time and social setting of this novel. It is set in a 20th century Hungary which is enjoying social and economic prosperity. However, many references were made to events that occurred towards the end of World War II and in particular to the Day of Liberation from the Germans, 18th of January 1945. Mention is also made of the Hungarian Revolution of 1956 which was an anti-Soviet revolt that was quickly crushed by the Russian army. About 3,000 Hungarians died in that uprising. From the novel, we know that the inhabitants of the 13th district comprise working class people who live in flats that are old, run down and rather dirty. John, however, is middle class, well educated and works for a very big company. He is quite well off as he and his family can afford to travel abroad for holidays, especially during the Christmas break. Well, that was the social setting of the novel for you. Do continue reading and if you have the time, read up about Budapest. It is said to be one of the most beautiful cities in the world. That's all for this episode. Bye!